Hello YouTube. This time a video from a different camera. I decided to go back to using my phone. But um, yeah, so let me know if this is any better in terms of uh, both image and audio quality. We'll have to figure that one out. One of the main reasons I never used my iPhone for extended periods of time for filming is because the built-in cameras were built-in cameras, built-in microphones were mono only and pretty piss poor quality. So I'll have to see how this goes. I'm now rocking an iPhone XR and uh, from what I've seen and heard, it's really not all that bad in terms of camera quality. So we'll have to see. So uh, let's get started with the video, shall we? So to start this video is my little home lab server here. This is just a regular off-the-shelf case with off-the-shelf components and there's nothing server-ish about it except the fact that it serves me virtual machines. And that's basically all it does, at uh, this point anyway. It is a standard micro ATX Nanoxia case, and uh, there's really not all, nothing all that special about it, except the fact that it is very, very fractal design-like in its design, and uh, also in its uh, use of materials like uh, noise dampening and all that kind of stuff. It reminds me of the R4 very much. It's almost like a clone of it. And uh, also, like the Define R cases, it is very heavy. So, so I put it up on this table here, just so you can see that. It has a little front door with two five and a quarter inch bays. And these are the fan controllers. And this is, I believe, a reset button, yeah. Actually, I've never used that before. And there's even noise dampening material here inside the door. It is a very quiet machine. You really don't hear it running at all. And uh, it feels very nice. I intend to use this second five and a quarter inch bay here to put uh, the SSDs that are currently on the drive sleds. I'm just gonna probably end up buying a uh, one of those five and a quarter inch bay to four, two and a half inch bay adapters. That you can use and i think that'll be very nice might also omit the optical drive and just get another one here i have a lot of 500 gig laptop drives that i may or may not use with the uh, uh host bus adapter that's in there so that's basically all there is to it on the outside let's switch to the inside and once again it is very heavy so i'll turn it around and then we can pop the side panel off like so. And uh, let's put it inside to get a good look inside. Alright. So I present to you the insides. It's really nothing all that special in there. You can see here this motherboard is not all that conventional. I bought this off AliExpress for about 60 bucks. It has the LGA 2011 socket. It has the two RAM DIMMs on this side and two on this side. So it only has four DIMMs. It's not quad channel, sadly, only dual channel. But uh, yeah, it also has three PCI Express slots, an X1 up there, an X16 here, and another X1 just above the power supply here. The top card here is an Intel Gigabit NIC. It's a dual port gigabit solution, very stable. Uh, I use this as my primary network adapter. It's also configured to be in a uh, NIC team in Windows Server 2016, which we'll take a look at later. This here is the HBA, this is not a RAID controller. This is a regular host bus adapter that passes through all the disks here on the side to the operating system. Uh, this is an upgrade that I actually put in this week. This is a uh, LSI 9205-8i. 8i stands for 8 internal devices. So it has two 4-port capable mini SAS connectors, SFF8087. They can handle 4 drives each, unless you put in a uh, multiplexer, I think, or expander, a SAS expander card in here as well. You can then pass through one mini SAS connector over to about you know, four or even more to get uh, maximum bandwidth that way. And um, I'll just get the original 
card that I put in here at first. That's this card over here. This is the predecessor to this card, in fact. This is the 9211 8i. And it's a higher number, but this is a slower card. This is only PCI Express 2.0 X8 card. This one is a PCI Express 3.0 X8 card. And this can handle SSDs way better than the old 9211 could. So if you intend to use an array of SSDs, definitely take a look at the 9205 and the 9208, I think it was, or the 9207, I forgot. They used the newer uh, SAS 2300 series controller. I forget the exact number from the top of my head. Uh, the old 9211-8i is a SAS 2008 uh, card. And that controller simply isn't up to up to snuff for uh, use with SSDs. I've read all about it on the uh, websites like Serve the Home and other places as well. So definitely keep an eye out for these. I picked this one up for 30 bucks. It's about the same going rate as the 9211-8i's. You can typically be had for about 20 bucks, but I think it's definitely worth the 10 bucks premium. Uh, RAM-wise, we have four DIMMs, like I said, they're each 16 gigabytes of registered ECC memory. So we've got 64 gigabytes in here. And the bottom slot is not occupied because that's only in use when I need to have a display out. Because major downside to these Chinese boards, they do not have video out at all. And it's not provided by the CPU, which is a Xeon E5 2650V2. 8 core, 16 thread, 95 watts, 2.6 gigahertz base, 3.1 boost, and is definitely a very potent little CPU. And it's very, very energy efficient if it's running idle. So that's a bonus. But uh, yeah, this weird concoction comes into place when I need video out. You might wonder why doesn't it have a bracket and why is it not installed? Well, <laughs> the answer to question two is the fact that it doesn't have a bracket. And the reason it doesn't have a bracket is because, because it only came with a low profile bracket. And as you can see, these connectors are not all that uh, common. These are VHDCI connectors. These are more commonly found on old SCSI cards than on display cards. And uh, I simply did not get a full size bracket with it and I, for the life of me, cannot find one. So if you have any suggestions on how to uh, get this to fit a full size bracket, let me know in the comments below. But this is an old Radeon Fire MV 2400. Not a Fire Pro, no, a Fire MV. MV standing for multi-view, because this is a four display capable card. Uh, this is a really old one, this is about 2004, 2005-ish. But uh, it's one of the few cards that I could find under 20 bucks that had a PCI Express uh, 1X connector. And it does its job very, very well. So that's basically all that I need to talk about on uh, on that subject right there. Uh, what I forgot to talk about was the power supply. So that's up next. It's, it's, it's a Be Quiet Pure Power 11. 80 plus gold, 400 watts. Definitely more than enough. This system pulls less than 100 watts under full load, really. It's really quite efficient. I could, couldn't have hoped for something better than that, for sure. And the last thing, because I was talking about SSDs, is of course the SSDs. And they are over here in the drive cages. You can see one here. There's also one hanging loose up here, because I was too lazy to actually fit it to the top sled. This is a 512 gig M550, came out of my desktop. And these three here are Kingston A400s. Again, this is a test lab, so I decided to go with the cheapest or free in this case, uh, SSDs that I could find that were somewhat okay. These are 480 gigabyte drives. So this is a 500 gig SSD and they're in a RAID 5 at the moment because uh, storage spaces does not natively support RAID 10, which is a pain in the rear, but I'll make it do with this. Read speeds are absolutely phenomenal, well in the one gigabyte range and write speeds are about 400 megs. So it's really all not, not all that bad. It's fine by me anyway. And uh, yeah, that is basically the outside tour of this machine and the inside tour as well, in terms of the components. Like I said, probably swapping out the uh, top drive cage here, or the bottom five and a quarter inch, I don't really know, with a uh, four port 
say the two and a half inch converter and then i'll just slide these ssds up there probably take out these drive cages to get some more airflow going this extra auxiliary fan here is helping somewhat but it, it's, it's really only there because they used to have hard drives in here and that's that was only for a very short period of time in you that is basically the server on the outside and the inside last thing that i just want to show you is a quick little look at what it's running software wise and uh, then we'll wrap up the video right so we're at the desktop now so let's log on to the server here Really not all that interesting, it's just a test server. So it is running Microsoft Hyper V server uh, version 2016. Just got some utilities here on the side that I needed for testing initially to find out how it performed. So because it is running Microsoft Hyper V server, or well, it's just server 2016 data center with Hyper V role installed, it is used as a hypervisor. This is a level 2 hypervisor. And it just has a handful of VMs at the moment. These are all used for some purposes in my Windows Server 2016 certification. When I read the book, I also like to build a VM and do the same stuff that they're describing. That way it's a bit easier to get your stuff done. I'm just on the first exam, uh, so that's installing Server 2016 and installing some roles and some configuration. Here's a Windows Server Update Server just a regular file server. These two are cluster members in a, uh, in a well in a cluster. That's not really set up all that much. It's a fillover cluster by the way. This is a Docker machine and this is just some test machine that I made that runs the Windows Admin Center. It's not required for anything. I just like to use the different uh, GUIs that you have at your disposal when you're running Windows Server uh, to manage your VMs and uh, other servers in your pool. So yeah, these are all currently not running. So yeah. So just a quick reminder here to see the specs that we were running again. We have a single Xeon CPU E5 2650V2, 64 gigabytes of RAM, Server 2016 data center. You can see the 64 gigs of RAM here. not much going on here, it's running at 1.2 gigahertz, 4 gigs of RAM in use. It thinks there are 8 slots, but there definitely are not. Let me take a look at our disks here. This is the SSD RAID, this is the RAID 5 array of the 4 SSDs you saw. This is a 60 gigabyte boot drive that I forgot to mention because it is not that important. And this temp partition here is just on the uh, M550's despair space that I had because when you create a RAID array and uh, the drives are different sizes the biggest drive will just you know adhere to the other drives and uh, run at a lower capacity so there was 30 gigs left over so I decided to use this for dumping some ISO files that I need to install the VMs because unless you integrate your Synology NAS with Active Directory which you can do very easily you can't really properly access the ISOs on there without throwing access denied errors, so I have no interest in changing that because quite frankly this is a test server. And it's mostly used to do, well, like I said, these uh, testing VMs here, so that is basically it. And that sums up the uh, little server that I built. Hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.